The Big Apple drops and the champagne corks pop as the new year makes its arrival. Headline News, I'm David Goodnow. In New York City, hundreds of thousands gather to say goodbye to 87 and give a grand welcome to 1988. Partiers were not deterred by temperatures in the 30s and a chance of light rain, sleet and snow. Similar celebrations are going on across the country as the new year begins in the various time zones. It's been 1988 in London for several hours and revelers gathered in Trafalgar Square to ring in the new year. Mounted police patrol the festivities to prevent the violence that has marred past celebrations. The clock's already struck 12 in the land of the rising sun, but as Mark Dalmage reports, the Japanese do it a little bit differently. The Year of the Dragon was ushered into the Japanese islands at midnight in a combination of religious ceremonies, fireworks, island dancing, and purification rites. The New Year celebration for the Japanese people is by far the most important holiday of the year. In fact, it takes three days of celebration to make it official, January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And before it is ended, close to 80% of its people will have taken the time to visit one of the nation's major shrines, like this one in Tokyo, the Meiji Jingu Shrine, where five million people are expected, or a smaller neighborhood shrine. They will ask the gods to bring them good luck in 1988, good health for their family and friends, peace on earth. At the stroke of midnight, fireworks lit the skies over the newly completed bridge linking the main island of Honshu with Shikoku Island. And in the north, far below ground at the same instant, workers and residents on Hokkaido celebrated the completion of the world's longest tunnel with some new sake. The traditional cry for good luck and a light and laser show. The one common sound across Japan on New Year's is the sound of the temple and shrine bells. They are struck 108 times to drive out the 108 evils said to dwell in mankind, giving everyone in Japan a clean slate for the new year. In the north, it was a scene lighted by candles set in containers made of ice. On a tiny island some 600 miles to the south of Tokyo, dancing on the beach in near 70 degree weather. Prayers recited in 1988 that were first heard more than a thousand years ago. The sounds of ancient Japan come alive as everyone from computer technician to housewife, auto assembly worker to trader, welcomes 1988 in the Japanese manner. Mark Dolmage, CNN, Tokyo. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev hopes 1988 brings even more gains in arms control. He made that remark during a traditional New Year's Eve speech to the Soviet people. Gorbachev will speak directly to the American people in an address to be aired tomorrow. A similar message from President Reagan will be broadcast in the Soviet Union. The New Year will bring about changes that affect nearly everyone. Airlines plan a crackdown in the amount and size of luggage passengers can carry on board. The IRS says you won't be able to deduct as much interest from your credit card expenditures. And as Burton Jones reports, long distance phone rates are also changing. As the old saying goes, we are a nation of laws, and there are now a lot more of them on the books to both bind and bewilder. In Wisconsin, drunk drivers can have their licenses confiscated on the spot. The same is true in Arizona if tests show a blood alcohol content of one-tenth of one percent, or if a suspect refuses to take a test. Couples seeking a marriage license in Louisiana and Illinois are required to take an AIDS exposure test, but neither state will ban weddings if the tests are positive. Florida's controversial 5% tax on advertising is repealed and will be replaced by a 1% increase in the state sales tax. Cigarette taxes in Michigan are up from 21 to 25 cents a pack. Oregon's gasoline tax has been raised two cents to 14 cents a gallon. Texas now taxes data processing services and repair and remodeling of non-residential properties, the final steps in a $5.7 billion tax hike. California now collects a 6% tax on out-of-state mail orders. Wisconsin has cut its inheritance tax by 20%. North Carolina's corporate income tax went up by 1%, the first increase in 45 years. Oregon companies with more than 24 employees must provide up to three months unpaid leave to parents of newborn children. 
Tennessee companies with more than 100 workers must give four months unpaid maternity leave to full-time employees. However, the state attorney general says the law may be unconstitutional in that it benefits only women. Airline passengers are now limited to two carry-on size bags or fewer. That means no more tricycles, golf clubs, or TV sets. But airline definitions of bag size differ, so check before you go. And in an apparent effort to further reduce discrimination among its highly varied population, California has legalized the sale of alcoholic beverages at nudist camps. Burton Jones, CNN, reporting. Winnipeg and Vancouver are in the second period. Gary Spinell, Headline Sports. This is Sandy Kenyon wishing you a Happy New Year from the Hollywood Minute. Oscar season has begun. The first of the ballots for nominees are in the mail. The 60th Annual Academy Awards Ceremony takes place in early April. It seems ALF has something in common with Alexis. Both characters are big hits in Europe. Shows like Dynasty and Dallas have long been popular overseas, but demand for American programming has increased recently as governments turn over stations to private enterprise. This is Sandy Kenyon with the Hollywood Minute. Checking the weather for New Year's Day, heavy snow for southeast Oregon, northeast Nevada, Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah. Lighter snow across the Great Lakes stretching into lower New England. Snow will turn to heavy rain from West Virginia into Virginia. Rain also across parts of Texas and the southeast. Highs near zero from eastern North Dakota through northern Minnesota. From zero to the teens from the northern plains into the upper Mississippi Valley and into the Great Lakes region. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s across the country's southern half. 20s, 30s, and 40s for the rest of the nation.